Hey guys, Joe from PocketNow.com. You know, we've heard a bit in the news about Intel trying to make an x86 version of Android that'll run on, well, Intel chips. We've also heard that Asus's next EPC isn't going to be running Windows 7 like everyone thought it was. They plan on releasing it running Android. So, that's really good news for people who want to have an Android netbook or an Android slate or even Android running on Intel processors in their phones, because choice is always a good thing. Well, just how far along are they? A lot further than you'd think. Today I want to show you two things. One is how to make a bootable Android USB drive so you can try and boot off of your laptop right now without having to format or risk your operating system. And if that doesn't work, I'll show you another way using a virtual PC. Okay, I've downloaded two files already. The first one is the UNet boot installer, which is the installer that you use to uh, download and install Linux distributions to thumb drives and to make live CDs and stuff with. The second is the Android 1.6 ISO for x86 architecture. They don't have anything above 1.6 just yet, but it's still a good way to check and see what Android can do. And once it gets booting, I'm told it boots really fast. So how do we make this? Well, first of all, we change the distribution up here from distribution mode to disk image because we've got the ISO on our desktop. We will navigate down to it and there it is right there. Open that up and then make sure you check this and then check it again. We want to put this on a USB drive and it is drive D. I already have my thumb drive installed. That's the safer way to do it. We're going to go ahead and say OK. Ah! It says, oh no, I've already done this before. I know that. We're going to yes to all. And it's going to extract and copy, do a whole bunch of stuff. At this point, if you'd forgotten about those important files that you had on your thumb drive, it's too late. So hopefully you uh, are watching this before you try it yourself, because this will erase everything on that thumb drive. Okay, installation is complete and it wants us to reboot now, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, depending on your computer, you may need to hit a special key to bring up your boot menu. In my case, that's F12. Okay, so I hit F12 to get to my boot menu, and my options are USB storage, removable devices, yada yada yada. I want USB, and I do have my thumb drive plugged in. And at this point, it's going to load up this boot menu from UNet boot. And what I want to do is run Android x86 without installation. If you're having problems, you can go down here to Visa mode. That helps with a few other monitor types and graphics drivers. But what I want to do is just show you the, uh, the normal run without install. And of course, you can install it to your hard drive, but I really wouldn't recommend that, at least not at this point of the game. So we'll go ahead and run it without installation. And down here at the bottom, it says it's detecting Android x86 with some dots marching across the screen. This is where a lot of people in the forum have said that uh, their install doesn't progress. Mine, as you can see, does. And I've got an Android hash prompt. And then I get a cursor up here in the corner. You can just barely see that. At this point, I should have the Android logo animating across the screen. But I don't have a supported computer. Now... EPCs are good. I think there's a Lenovo in there that's good um, with Visa mode, but this Dell Inspiron 11 just isn't supported by this ROM, so I'm kind of out of luck. I can't show you any further than this, but there's some other videos on the internet that show you how to do it. What I want to show you, however, is how to get Android on your laptop. So we're going to pull out the thumb drive, get rid of that, and we are going to reboot the computer back up into Windows and I'll show you how to set up a virtual PC so you won't really be booting into Android but you'll still be able to run it on your computer uh, hopefully with a little bit more luck than what we just had there. First thing I've done here is I've gone out to Microsoft's website and downloaded a Virtual PC 2007. Now, I am running on Windows 7 uh, Home Premium, but that's not eligible for the uh, Windows XP mode and Virtual PC. So go ahead and get 2007. You'll get an error saying it wasn't designed for this OS, or if you're on Vista or another OS, it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, in my 
experience here, it's been working just fine. So go ahead and download and install that. And then we want to click on this new button to open up a new virtual PC wizard. We'll go through that, create a virtual machine. Next, we're going to call this Android X86. You can call it anything you'd like. Next, operating system is other. You have Windows and OS2 OSs to choose from. This definitely is not one of those, so we'll say next. We're going to use the recommended amount of RAM, which in this case is 128 meg. You could change that if you wanted, but for illustration purposes, we'll accept the default. And then we want to set up a new virtual hard disk. This is the storage that uh, that virtual PC is going to use. Now, keep in mind, this hard disk is going to be at least that much space. So in this case, 16 gig on disk, and it can grow to be 130 and a half gig. That's actual space being eaten up on your hard drive, so keep that in mind. We'll go ahead and finish that, and great, there we are. We want to go now into settings, and everything looks good. Android x86, 128 meg RAM, yada, 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 yada. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that. Okay. Now, I've gone one step ahead, so let me go back. We want to mount up that CD so we can boot from it. So we're going to capture an ISO image, and we're going to navigate back to where we have that ISO on our desktop and choose Open. And then we're going to reboot the computer. And I'm just going to reset that. Okay, now what that's going to do, it's just going to run through BIOS. This is a virtual PC. And then very quickly, you can see we're all the way up to our Android Live install. So I just want to go ahead and run Android without installation. Now, a lot of you are thinking, well, why not just install it to the hard disk? You can try that, but I never had any success with it. So let's go ahead and just run it from here and see what we get. You'll notice we're getting some errors and some warnings. That's because this is still in development a really gross screen and you may think at this point to abandon all hope but I've done this before so just hang out don't worry too much about it we'll get past that in just a minute okay I ended up having to reboot uh, the virtual PC and I decided to boot this time in Visa mode and you can see I'm getting a lot better graphical experience uh, sometimes it'll work in that other mode, but uh, Visa has worked a little bit better for me, so we're going to stick with that for now. And you can see the Android animation cycles through about three or four times, and then here we are. Let me move this up here a little bit for you, center it in the screen. Now, first of all, you'll notice, here's my Google search, and I'm getting a message saying, hey, if you want to use your mouse cursor inside the virtual machine, uh, go ahead and do that, but to get out of it, you have to press the Alt over on the right-hand side. So once we've done that, we can click in here and search for Pocket Now. Press Enter. And if we had networking, that'd be great. We don't, so it's not going to work for us. But you can see you can interact with the keyboard there, and it's giving us the no network connection. So, so far, so good. To go back, press the Escape key. If you want to, keep going back to the home screen here, the menu key should be the Windows button. Come over here and drag the tray out so you can see what comes already inside this. You'll notice there are no Google Apps in here. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to get those on there, including the market, which kind of limits what you can do with this. Click and scroll side to side. Actually, I long clicked on one spot. So click and drag to move to the other screens. This one has three home screens. So just like that. A little bit laggy, a little bit hard to control using the, uh, the trackpad, uh, unfortunately. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it, but it gives you a good sense of what you can do using Android on a laptop. Now I really am impressed with what you can do with some of the Lenovo's uh, getting them to work just booting up from uh, from your USB drive uh, and on the EPC's as well. 
Uh, from what I have heard, you can get boots that are under 7 seconds on an EPC. So if you want something really fast that just gets you online, and on those builds they do have networking working or have a workaround, depending on which version of the EPC you're using. I'll link over to the, uh, the full instructions on how to check and see if your laptop is on the list of supported laptops, or if you're going to have to do something kind of uh, hacky like I did just to get it in there and play with it. But for something that's nearly fully functional on an EPC, including networking, uh, super fast boot time and it'll let you do what you need to. Surfing the web is pretty quick and uh, we're talking Chrome here so it's it's still pretty full functioned. Uh, you'll be able to watch all of your YouTube videos. Of course no flash on it until we get Froyo and install the flash player. But overall pretty cool. So showing you how to run Android on your laptop. I'm Joe for PocketNow.com. If you thought this was a cool video, thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, do it now. If you don't want to stay in touch with everything that's going on in the world of uh, mobile computing and mobile devices, well, there's nothing I can do to help you.